Hi and welcome to This Is My Architecture. My name is Peter, I'm joined by Alistair from Kenos. Good to have you here. Thanks Peter, glad to be here. All right, so before we talk about your solution, tell us about your company. So I work for a company called Kenos. Uh, we're a Belfast based company uh, with just over 1400 people. Uh, and we do two things. We build bespoke digital services and we create uh, platforms for customers in healthcare, government and the commercial sector. All right, so what problem do you want to talk about today? So we're here to talk about the interoperability challenge within healthcare and how we bring data together from a range of different silos and present it in a really easy to view way for clinicians and care workers. All right, so uh, aggregating data sounds like a challenge. Uh, let's just go right into it and talk us through. Yeah, so the first thing is in the NHS, all our users access the solution over the N3 network. So this is a secure network provided by the NHS. And we use Direct Connect to help uh, provide those data flows into our AWS environment. So when a user opens up a patient, the first thing that will happen, uh, a request is sent to our integration engine. All right, so um, integration engine, uh, I see uh, there's a separation of uh, responsibilities. Um, I see different yeah. databases in place, so um, why is this? So the, the pattern that we followed here is a, a microservices architecture. Uh, and you can see that's deployed across the platform. Mm -hmm. A range of different microservices, each one tasked with doing an individual thing. And that allows us then to uh, develop and maintain, uh, monitor and deploy those all independently. And it gives us great flexibility. All right, so each of those services uh, is then uh, controllable and scalable independently. Um, all right, so just talk us through uh, what yeah. has happened after integration. So we get the request through from the integration engine. And the first thing that will happen is the integration engine will send off requests to the various third party systems where data needs to be retrieved from. That will come back through the integration engine. And at that point, we hand off to our fire service. Mm -hmm. So FHIR is, uh, stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. It's an emerging standard from HL7, and it's been designed to really help with the interoperability challenge in healthcare. And what it provides is a really rich data model that we can use when exchanging and storing data. So whenever this information comes back, the first thing that we do is we, we normalize that all down into a single FHIR format and store it within our Postgres uh, RDS instance. And that gives us a real basis for presenting that information back to the user. All right, so this is, so use FHIR uh, format to standardize and to uh, eventually then also persist in a uh, structured way. Correct. Right? Now, uh, patient data conta contains uh, unstructured information as well. So where do you get this from? Yeah, no, absolutely. And this is where we're moving towards now, which is being able to handle document content. Mm -hmm. So discharge summaries, clinic letters, Lots of different content is generated by a range of different care settings. And what we're doing is using services like AWS Storage Gateway to really provide the bridge to mirror local content and allow that then to be stored within an S3 bucket. Mm -hmm. And once that content's within S3, we're able to use that to trigger an event on an SQS queue. And we've really adopted this as a, as a pattern now to really orchestrate uh, the processing of these messages and triggering then Lambda functions to initiate the business process required to store the metadata for that uh, document and the content. And what we do, once we've processed through our Lambda, we'll hit our document service, and within that we'll store the metadata within our Postgres RDS instance, but also we'll store the content within our S3 bucket. So what we're able to do then, as a user, opens up a patient within the solution is not only bring back the structured data through our integration engine, but also call our document service and bring back a list of documents for that patient and provide in a single longitudinal view of the patient's health record. All right, understood and agreed, uh, because this part here is a pattern, as you said, and it's a very good pattern because it allows you to uh, um, protect yourselves against uh, you know, failures and uh, other issues that may pop up around uh, Lambda. Now, uh, so Lambda takes care of um, structure. Uh, this service takes care of content. You store content right here, and you make things available to any requests that are out there. Um, sounds like a really good solution. But in total, what is the um, load that you're able to cope with? Because I assume there's a lot of requests coming. Absolutely. And this has been designed, as, as we've talked, for scale, 
with each of the different microservices. Uh, currently, for the, the example we're talking about, there's 650,000 patients whose records are being processed. We've got around 10,000 health and care workers mm -hmm. accessing the solution. And roughly about 2,000 of those are active at any moment in time, all generating load on each of these services. And that's, that's one element of the platform. We've also designed the platform to be multi-tenant, mm -hmm. which allows us then to onboard additional customers and using the same uh, microservice-based architecture to scale out the load uh, as, as required. Right, okay, awesome. Thank you for this. Thanks, thanks for sharing all of this. And uh, thank you for watching This is My Architecture.